Hi, this is Tag again and today I want to do a bit of an update on my obsession with the Pentium 4 mobiles. Now, if you've seen the last video, you might know this board here. Uh, this is the e-powered ASRock board. And, well, the reason I e-powered it is because um, this board can run Prescott-based uh, P4 mobile CPUs at full multiplier. Now, it still didn't work for Northwood based ones, but I finally figured this out and well, as you can see there is a bunch of cables here that I put on here while figuring it out. But before I take you on a tour of this board and like my current um, state of the mod in, in general, I want to Go over to the computer quickly and do a bit of a theoretical breakdown of how the mod for the Northwood chips work and well show you how I figured it out. So see you at the computer. Okay so here we are. Let's start off with giving TZK the credit he deserves because he is the guy that brought me back into this P4 mobile modding stuff because I had given up years ago. And well, basically what he did, he posted a little extract of the Intel datasheet for the P4 mobile on a hardware looks thread uh, about some guy who wanted to get a P4 mobile to run on a MSI board because it had low um, power consumption and he had it in a like passively cooled uh, HT PC or something. And along with that, he also posted this here little schematic of the deep sleep and the GHI pin which according to this thing up here are the pins that you need to basically switch between the speed step states so uh, 12x and full multi basically so you can see here it's hooked up to uh, VCC3 which I suspect is um, Vigor on this MSI uh, data sheet. Anyways, let's move on directly to the Intel data sheet for 478. Let's get this a bit here, more center. Okay, so here you can see that GHI is a physical pin right up here. There is the notch. And Deep Sleep is also a physical pin. Now, let's see how you switch between the states. Now, this is basically your timing graph for the deep speed, uh, deep sleep technology. Uh, as you can see here, you have to first be in sleep mode, so standby mode basically, to engage deep sleep. Now, usually this would be done by the motherboard through the GPIO. Uh, in our case, we will be doing it with a ordinary tip switch. So. Basically, this is the GHI pin. This is the one that controls the multiplier. Now, I think what they want to say with this here is that it basically doesn't matter if you switch the GHI pin if you are not in deep sleep, which is correct. You can just switch it on and off and nothing will happen. Uh, basically, what you want to do is once you're in this deep sleep mode, you can switch around the GHI pin. And so basically, if you enter deep sleep mode with the GHI pin high, you want to exit with it low and the other way around. Uh, VID we can ignore for all intents and purposes with this because, well at least with the boards I worked with, because on the ASUS board the VID is completely ignored if you set a voltage manually in BIOS and on my ASUS boards they are e-powered, so yeah. Uh, this might get problematic if you have a board that has offset for CPU V core. So if you ever try this mod on a board like that and it does weird stuff, then it's probably something to do with the VID. Uh, anyways, there's also one quick thing I want to put in here. Uh, there's basically a stop clock. I thought I would have to might manually switch this on. Uh, so in the rest of the video, you will see me monitoring the signal. This is of no relevance, so you can ignore it. But I thought it might do something, so I basically 
well, look, kept the lookout for it in my testing. So let's get back to this here. Uh, basically, there is two ways of doing this. One way is to just, if in case of something like the ASRock boards with the socket that are through hole, so you have access to each and every pin at the back of the board, you can just hook up your wire directly to this pin and a pull up and a dip switch to ground. Now on the ASRock board specifically, you need to cut a trace between this VCC pin and this GHI pin, as well as a trace between, I think it's this VSS pin and the deep slip pin. Uh, because ASRock being ASRock and saving cost didn't put any resistors or anything between there and just put traces to basically have the pins connected at all. Uh, the other one would be for something like the ASUS P4C800. So let's open up a datasheet. Now this is actually P4P800. Doesn't matter, I'm going to get to the P4C800 right after this. So this is your uh, deep slip pin on the P4P800. As you can see, it goes to a 56 ohm uh, resistor uh, array here. Now, this is great because there is basically now two ways of doing the mod. Uh, here you have your V-core on one side and on the other side you have your deep slip pin. Now, I did the mod in the way that I basically cut the trace and like put my own uh, pull-up resistor on here. But this was mostly done because I already had this little, uh, my little external test board, which I'm going to show you later. If you only have this board and you're only going to mod this board, I would recommend you just hook up a dip switch to this pin and to ground basically. Because you have your own pull up here, this goes straight to V-Core, it's only 56 ohms, so a bit lower than I would like to use for a pull up resistor, but it will work. So this would be the easy way. Uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to show you this in practice, but I, I removed the resist, uh, I removed the, the trace and put it on the back because there is a test point there. And same for the I pin. This goes to a 56 ohm resistor as well. Um, I removed the resistor. I would recommend you just solder to this side uh, with dip switch to ground so you can use the pull up that is provided by the board. Now let's move on to the P4C800. Now Okay, so here we are with the P4C800. Now I put the socket in the same orientation because it is, it is easier for me. And here you can see, again, 56 ohms here. And again, just hook up your dip switch to this side of the resistor. This is above the socket, I think, in this case. Yes, it's above the socket. And you should be fine. Same for the... Uh, deep slip pin. Deep slip pin is here on this resistor array. Now here I actually recommend you use the test pad on the back of the board. I will show you in the hands-on part of the video later on. Now again you can use the basically integrated pull-up here because the other side is also v-core. And if you want to do it externally like I did, uh, you will see later I have my little test thingy that displays me all the sleep signals and stuff like that. Uh, then obviously you have to remove the pull-up. But yeah, if you just mod it on the board, just dip switch to the pull-up and other side of the dip switch to ground and you're fine. So this is, I think, about it for the theoretical part. Let's move on to actual show and tell on the boards I modded. Okay, so here we are. Let's start off with turning around the board and seeing where this mess of cables comes from. This is all of my signals. Now on this one, I actually did a bunch more monitoring than required because I still wasn't sure what exactly would be required to be molded. So I quickly threw together this little thing. This is just your prototyping, like pre-drilled little prototyping PCB. Uh, basically what we have up here is uh, four LEDs, four transistors to, well, so I can, you basically can switch the LEDs with the only one 
point something volts that V core is. And you can see here STP, that's stop clock, sleep, deep sleep, and your GHI pin. Now basically what I do here is uh, these LEDs are just going to be on if the signal is, well, one, so uh, high and off if it's low. Uh, these two are not hooked up to any of these dip switches. So when I, I first connected this to this ASRock board here and went into standby, basically what happened was that these two immediately turned off. So I knew those two were low, which is exactly what I wanted. And then I added my dip switch. My dip switch here is, there is one pin here, that's a hookup for a V-core to pull it high. And on the back there is, I'm not sure if you can see it, a tiny, uh, I ran out of like these big fat through hole resistors and I used tiny little uh, SMD resistors here. But basically what's happening here is there is a, uh, one kilo ohm resistor between V core and each one of those like one and six on this dip switch here and one is hooked up to uh, deep slip pin and two is hooked up to GHI pin uh, six is hooked up to GHI pin and well then I just flip this one up actually flip this one up so this goes low because on, on the switch is connected then I flip this one up and flip this one down, then this one is back high again, and then you can wake up the system and it should resume in the high multi-mode, which it does. Uh, this, this stuff down here is not relevant. I just put my uh, BSL mode on here as well, because I found it nice and convenient. Uh, so from this little ASRock board, I, I kind of did a version two. And this is just a bit of show of, of what I did here. Um, when I did this, I still thought that uh, the mod couldn't be done on ASUS because of the type of socket they were using. So I put some extra effort in, but that's actually not too bad because this board is still one of the only ones that runs um, the Prescott Pentium 4 Mobiles at full multiplier. Actually, one of the only ones with DDR1. So I also recently bought this one here. This is the DDR2 variant. Now you can see it's pretty destroyed here. Uh, I bought this with a broken VRM because ASRock makes cheap as VRMs and power planes. But yeah, this is DDR2 and in theory should be better. But I haven't yet gotten around to e-powering this one properly. Um, it does post though, so it is working. Well, post once I hook up a e-power. I had one hooked up for testing. Now. This is just my usual e-power. Actually, this is a GTX 285 VRM. Cut off and pull on here with some pretty hefty copper plate. Uh, also, this is a bit more elegant zombie mod. It doesn't have the uh, step-down converter on the back. It actually takes its 3.3 volt for the controller from the 20 pin. But that doesn't really change much about this. And the back of the board, well, if you ever want to run this Azure board for either the um, press code mobiles or just in general because I don't know you're a bit crazy or something uh, it needs heavy volt mods it needs a e-power because the stock VRM here is two-phase and on the previous version my original entry into the e-powered 478 world here I noticed that the power plane gets really hot. Like, hot enough that uh, you basically get a puddle on LN2 around the socket. Which is why I added a bunch of, of power bridges here. This is basically just a uh, 2.5 square millimeter wire. Uh, these, I think these four, no, these two and this one are V core and these one are ground directly behind the socket. And this seems to help. I got a lot lower V drop on this between the e-power and the socket. On the other one, I have well over 0.1 volts. On this one, I have about 60, 70 millivolts, which is still not great, but it is significantly better. So this is basically the harness here for my little board here. 
Yeah. Let's hook it up. I have nice color coded. Which I'm not gonna use that probably. <laughs> uh, but that's still monitoring basically the uh, stop clock and sleep signals, even though it's not needed. And then I got the board view of the Asus board from TZK. So second time in this whole project that he helped me out a whole bunch. And well, this led to this P4C 800 here. This is just a regular P4C 800. Like not the dash E or any version, it's just the vanilla version because it was, well, I wasn't sure if I'm going to kill it or anything, so rather use the vanilla version. Uh, you can see there is the uh, GHI pin up here. It's hooked up to the top resistor I showed you. And this is not great to see. Uh, I should probably put a picture here. So if you're watching this, then there will be a picture here with uh, a nice little circle and a nice little arrow to exactly which um, test point you need to solder this to because I put a bunch of hot glue on here so it doesn't rip off the cable. Uh, black one is just V-Core. So the white one here is your deep slip pin. Uh, again, I just cut the trace up here and basically soldered it to the back because I didn't want to remove the whole resistor array. Uh, no. Obviously, it seems like you can actually do this mod without like removing any resistors at all. Uh, maybe just monitor the temperatures of the resistor, but what was it? 0.03 watts or something, so it should be fine. To just use the 56 ohm resistor as the pull up here. But yeah, that's basically what the Asus board has. Now, let's actually get this on the bench and let's demonstrate the mod in action. Okay, so here is the board all set up. Let's set some stuff in BIOS and let's go over some important points now. This will just be your standard overclock. I am just going to go to something like 150. Should give us 3 GHz. Now this is a 2 GHz Pentium 4. So this should work. 1.65. Let's select chipset. Now, this is just your standard stuff, but now is the important. Actually, let's disable this too first. Okay, uh, now is the important stuff if you're running an ACES board or at least a P4C or P4P, uh, you have to set suspend mode to S1 only because otherwise it fully turns off the system when you select standby. Also APM disabled, it just messes with your stuff. It doesn't work half the time the like switching for some reason. That uh, is a strange issue I found out while testing. I don't know why it does that, but it does that. So yeah, there we are, 150, 1.65 volts. Let's Hold this. And as you can see, while well, this is booting, uh, here is our little gadget all hooked up. Now these two are not lit up because I don't have stop clock and sleep uh, like cable as on the Astro board. Actually, why doesn't this stuff focus? Come on. Like this maybe? Yes. So, okay. We are in Windows, so let's open up our CPU Z. And there's another quirk here that I'm going to show you. Uh, as you can see, we're running at X12, Pentium 4 M2 GHz. And now I'm going to enter turn off computer and standby. Now I'm not going to switch the clocks on the first standby. You can see 01 means standby. I now push a key and it should wake up because, but it doesn't. My keyboard dropped out or something. If I click on the mouse, it works. Okay, so if your keyboard drops out, it doesn't work. Great. Let's see if we can fix this.
Okay, we got a keyboard again. So this was just a keyboard dropout. Uh, but as you can see now, O1 means it's in standby and 1 means it resumes again. This is important so you can know basically if you crashed your overclock. So let's go into standby again. There we are. O1. Come on, focus. Eh. Doesn't matter. Anyways, so let's zoom in on this one. There we go. Let's switch off Deep Sleep and GHI. Switch on Deep Sleep. And now this should go to 01 if I press something. It doesn't again. But it works again if I press the mouse. So my keyboard keeps dropping out for some reason. Anyways, that shouldn't matter. But as you can see now, we are running at 3 GHz. Now, usually I just press like spacebar to resume, but yeah, because I'm making a video now, it doesn't work properly, obviously. That's basically what you have to expect. Now, let's see, our memory is running 150, exactly. I set it to 1 to 1, and 2 to 5. It's pi fast. Just want you to see that this is basically really running at 3 gigahertz and not just bugging out CPU-Z. Well, I obviously did more testing than that. I took a uh, fast Cinebench Northwood on fast Cinebench 2003 Northwood on uh, another chip and I think fastest valid Pentium 4 Mobile as well and stuff like that. Uh, fastest, I think W Prime as well or something. But yeah, it it is truly running at that. This should be actually 3 gigahertz, that's going to be like 80 seconds or something, I think. Let's see. Let's see where it goes. Didn't do this test before, but this is just basically to prove to you that <laughs> I'm not bugging out CPU-Z, I actually figured out the CPU. <laughs> uh, that, in case you were doubting CPU-Z, who would ever do that? Uh, come on, finish. Uh, looks like faster than 80 even. I'm just used to really slow PyFast run because I did pre-testing on SD RAM. Yeah, 71. So, yeah, that is a Pentium 4M running at full multiplier on a Asus P4C. Now, this is not a very good Pentium 4M, but that doesn't really change that it is finally working at full multiplier, so you don't need ridiculous FSBs to get overclocks on 24 m anymore. You can just run them at their intended multiplier and get nice overclocks. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope at least some of you might end up trying this. Bye!